Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm with Laura Stearns today. She is with St. Jude. Yep. And I'm Kim Harkness. And again, I am the guest host. I'm filling in for Charlie Maloof. Laura with St. Jude. Tell me, for our listeners out there, if there's one thing you want them to take away after our conversation yeah. today, what would that be? It's quite simple. Families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food so that they can focus on helping their child live. And that includes children right here in the Carolinas. So there you go. It's very simple, but we're gonna talk about how that gets done. So you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. Okay, so before we start, Laura, Tell me a little bit about you. Let's talk about you. How did you get to St. Jude? Tell me about uh, your story. Yeah, so I've been with St. Jude for a little over five years now, which is a milestone I was so excited to reach um, because it is a hustle. It's every day for the kids at St. Jude, and it's such a passion project that I get to do for my day job, and I love it. And before this, I worked for another nonprofit, but St. Jude is special. St. Jude has something that's a little bit more than anything I've ever experienced. I grew up in the nonprofit space fundraising in honor of my great-grandmother, Laura, who died of ovarian cancer. She kind of sparked it in me. Um, So I went to my first fundraising event when I was 10 and have continued ever since. I just, I love it. I don't know So why. you've always kind of known that yeah. you wanted to be in this space, yes. right? And, and yeah. giving back. So It's selfishly fulfilling for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and there's, there's such a need. And yes. I'm, I will tell you, I've been very much looking forward to, to this particular podcast. <laughs> uh, to, to your point, it, there is something very special about St. Jude and the mission and, and uh, the vision that uh, Danny Thomas uh, set out years yes. ago, right? So, um, so let's talk about, let's get into it just yeah, right away. Let's there's, into there's, the there's, nitty-gritty. There's lots. There's to, so th- much to talk about. <laughs> there's a lot. So in 1962, I yes. think, keep me honest, that's the right That is okay. the date. Okay. So Danny Thomas, entertainer and founder for St. Jude, mm-hmm. this is something that really spoke to my heart. Okay. Um, so he had, he had this dream. Mm-hmm. He had a dream that no child should ever die in the dawn uh, of, of their life. Yes. Right. So that is just profound to mm-hmm. me. So talk to me about his vision and mission, how that's being fulfilled, yeah. how it started and how it's going. Oh my gosh. So Danny was not a name that I was familiar with when I first started at St. Jude, but wow, did Danny Thomas have a vision that still rings true today. Mm-hmm. So when he was an up and coming entertainer, he was down on his luck. He went to church, he went to a mass and he really found what faith meant to him. And he prayed to St. Jude Thaddeus, the patron saint of hopeless causes. And he said, show me my way in life and I will build you a shrine. A couple years passed, he kept that prayer close to his heart, and he finally figured out how he wanted to fulfill that promise. And he wanted to build a hospital in the South during the civil rights era, and he wanted to lead the way for integration, for inclusion, for hope. Uh, And he decided to build St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. And St. Jude Children's Research Hospital was the first fully integrated hospital in the South, and it really sparked a movement. And he said, we will never turn away a child based off of the color of their skin, their ability to pay, their religious beliefs, any of it. And that is still true today. It doesn't matter where you come from. You could come from Charlotte, North Carolina. You could come from India, and St. Jude is going to welcome you with the same love that Danny Thomas did on day one. Yeah. Well, and you know, you make a great point. Cancer doesn't discriminate. It doesn't. It doesn't. So the the need is is certainly there. Um, so tell me about uh, the impact. So let's, let's talk about the impact yeah. of the hospital. And we know it takes a lot of money to make this happen, <laughs> right? It is, it is, um, it's expensive. It is. And the last thing a family wants to think about, or the last thing they can think about, they're, they're concerned about their child's life. So the dollars and where the money's going to come from, how they're going to get there, where they're going to stay, how they're going to eat. Tell us, it's, it's very overwhelming. It is. So tell us about the impact. I cannot imagine 
being in their shoes, right. being a parent or a loved one that hears this child has cancer, your child has cancer. And to know that St. Jude is there for these families, to give them hope, to give them an opportunity for life is such a blessing. And so when you hear your child has cancer, you immediately think of that financial burden. It comes to mind. It is expensive to treat these cancers because St. Jude is treating the worst of the worst. Um, And so when we opened our doors back in 1962, the overall childhood cancer survival rate was only 20% or less. So if you think of five children that are diagnosed with cancer, one of them was making it at that time. Mm -hmm. Just one. And we flipped that statistic Mm -hmm. today, which is incredible. So when you think of five children that have pediatric cancer, four out of five are making it. But one isn't. And one is one too many. So St. Jude is leading the way the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer as well as other life-threatening illnesses. And to do that, they need dollars to fund that groundbreaking research. So if your child is going to St. Jude, you can rest assured that doctors are there 24-7 working on their projects, funding that research, making it happen for your child. So if your child has symptoms that pop up or they need a specific type of treatment, maybe it's not working and they need to make a new plan, that doctor is going to cater that treatment to your child Mm -hmm. to give your child the best outcome possible. And they're never going to give up. Yeah. And you know, um, what I found so interesting, I, I had the honor and the privilege of visiting yes, Memphis. You did. It was so <laughs> it was great. So fun. It was a lot of fun. And and um, so many doors open and my, my eyes were open yep. and such a learning opportunity. Um, you know, so what I'd like to talk about is is that campus in itself. So yeah. the doctors there, the housing there, the building there, like what is available for those, for those kids? Because it's not just the kids that I learned about, it's that they are a patient for life. Yes. So once you're in St. You're Jude, unfortunately you have to have those services, but you're there for life mm-hmm. and, and you have the backing of that, those doctors and those facilities for life. Yes. Because once you're in the St. Jude family, you're in our family. Yes. We're going to take care of you. Yeah. And it's not just the patient, which I think is really interesting. It's the whole family. Yeah. So when you think of a child that goes through pediatric cancer, their journey, if they have a sibling, if mom and dad want to come and be part of it, they need that support system. And St. Jude wants to keep the child In childhood, right? So, like, it's all about the fun times at St. Jude. And the whole campus, it is bright. It is vibrant. It is filled with hope and smiles and laughter. It's built for the kids. Gosh, it is. It's It's so fun. And I remember my first time going to Memphis, I I was scared. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You think about the horrible things these children are going through. It's like, how am I going to react? How can I keep my composure, make sure that they don't see how scared I am for them? And Kim, when I walked in and I saw a kid rolling down the hallway in a red wagon, I about lost it. This place is filled with joy. Right. Joy is what's up front and hope. Um, And when you think about your kid going to St. Jude, if you're traveling there, to get there at no cost. You need to get there quickly the next day, the next week. No cost. We've got you. Um, When you get there, where are you going to live? What are you going to do? St. Jude has you. Don't worry. We've got housing facilities so that you have a place to stay and you can keep your family together. And then when you have to go for treatment and for scans and whatever's up next for you on campus, gosh, it's a fun time. They're going to make it as much fun as possible. As possible. (laughs) You know, and what I learned too, so, you know, short term, long term. Yep. So there's needs there. A kid, Mm -hmm. like you said, they they want the kids to still be kids. So what are they missing out on? Otherwise, school, School. right? They're missing out on school. They're missing out on, you know, I I realized um, or I saw that they had just put in a, a beauty shop or yes, a salon there. Yes, in the family there. comment, yes, the beauty you know, shop. Because they want to get, you want to, they want to feel pretty or they want to right. they want to have something special for them. And mm-hmm. so talk to us about those yeah. extras. It's a lot of extras because we want St. Jude to feel like home, okay? When a child is diagnosed with cancer, the most common type of pediatric cancer is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. It has a treatment journey that's upwards of three years. Wow. So when you think about a child who is five years old, Getting diagnosed with ALL, gosh, they're not going to be done until they're eight. That's a lot of their life. That's a chunk. So how can we help them make 
beautiful childhood memories while they're going through this journey that none of us want them to be going through. And that salon, the music room in a studio similar to this one, actually, (laughs) they can record their own tracks and they can really express themselves. There's art therapy. There's the maker space where they can do some DIY projects, woodworking if they're into it. There's something for everyone. And it's so that they can really process what they're going through. And you think about it as adults, we sometimes don't have the words to say what that looks like. What is a cancer journey? And if you asked a child, how are you feeling today? They might not have those words either. And that's where music therapy comes in and art therapy and all of the fun things that it feels like play, but it's doing so much more. It's healing on a deeper level. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure is. So all of that comes with a cost. Yes, it does. So average cost. Tell me what an Ooh. average. So um, average cost for a patient yep. for their uh, their time there. Yes. So let's talk about ALL, the one we just talked about. Sure. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Three years is the treatment journey. Treatment alone can cost over two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. That's just treatment. You throw in housing and food Meals. and travel, all of it. We are talking $425,000 for one patient. And that's possible, though, because of donors like Broad River Retail, donors like your memory makers that are helping make donations possible with their customers and in their stores. It truly, it matters. Every dollar matters. And a lot of times people think that number is daunting. It's overwhelming. Like, how could I ever help that child? They need so many dollars. Every dollar matters. One dollar, that's a pediatric isolation gown right there. So when you think about it, that dollar goes to work. A hundred dollars, that's a red wagon. So they can have some fun instead of... The red wagons. So tell the listeners about the red wagons because I learned about these stories. Well, this is great. (laughs) So when you think about it, if you are presenting a child with an option, they get to choose, right? You can either go to treatment and go in between different office appointments and scans in a wheelchair or... Do you want to take a ride in a little red wagon? I mean, the choice is clear. Um, And to see these kids relax, ride in style, fill up their red wagon with all their stuffed animal friends, all sorts of things, it truly, it brings them joy. Um, But for those patients that are going through the thick of it, it gives them an opportunity to lay down and relax, um, to be with their family, maybe make a memory with mom or dad running down the hallway and seeing how fast that wagon can go. Sure. It, there's a lot to it. But I love it, the red yeah. wagon story. I, it, it's, uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I learned <laughs> the importance of the red wagon. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's the connection that we have. So with Broad River, we are so committed to St. Jude. And I, I share this story um, many times I've shared it. About four years ago, we went to our stores Mm -hmm. and to our memory makers, and we gave them the opportunity to say, hey, you know what? We're growing, and we want to really focus our efforts. So if you had one charity that you would like to support, to have our stores support, what would that be? And so we put it out to them. We waited. We waited. We yes. came back. And then we saw we, it was overwhelming. Yeah. It was St. Jude. And and it wasn't, we had supported uh, St. Jude um, from one month to another in, in smaller ways, but this was a focused effort. So we're like, okay, for the kids, yes. we're all in. Yes. So that's one way that for our stores at Ashley here in the Carolinas, uh, $25 donation, uh, 20% off which our is private a deal. event, which is a, a d- deal, deal right? <laughs> right? So we do that once a month. We have a private event. So um, our, our our listeners, our our, um, our guests, mm-hmm. they come in and they support that. Yep. And not only do they support with the 25, we have folks out there that are so giving. They give above and beyond. Yes, they do. Hundreds or a thousand. And it's it's incredible. It truly is. And to know that those dollars are making a difference in the life of a child. And when you think about the footprint of Broad River and you think about St. Jude's footprint, there is an affiliate clinic right here in Charlotte that I think a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Um, So St. Jude has partnered with Novant Health, Hemby Children's Hospital. And if your child here in Charlotte or the greater Carolinas, let's be honest, is going through a treatment journey, maybe they're just very ill and you're going to the hospital for the first time. 
Should you go to Hemby Children's and they say, your child has cancer, you are immediately brought over to that St. Jude affiliate clinic. And they see if St. Jude can help you. More often than not, St. Jude can. What is remarkable about this is that those families at the St. Jude affiliate clinic, they also don't receive a bill for treatment, wow. travel, housing, or food. But more so than that, they get to stay close to home. They get to go to school as often as they feel up to. They get to make memories with their siblings and be here local right alongside me even visiting one of your locations. Right. So, you know, that's that's a great myth buster because yeah. when you think about St. Jude and you see the commercials on TV and you think it's just national, how is it impacting us locally? Mm-hmm. Well, this is how the affiliate clinics and and um, this, the service there. Right. Local, and local not clinics. every child in the Carolinas goes to the affiliate clinic. Sure. I want to be clear. Sure. Um, they do go to Memphis. Yeah. And they also, they're coming from all over, right? right? So what's great about the Carolinas is we have more than just the affiliate clinic. So if you think about child, a child and their childhood, they like to go to events. They like to make memories with sure. us. Um, and that's where the St. Jude Dream Home comes in. That's where the St. Jude Walk Run comes in. That's where all of these fun events come in because it's an opportunity to uh, for us to invite these patient families to come out and see the community that loves them so much and wants to support them and bring them in on that magic. Yeah, so you know, you brought up a great it was it's great point. Timing is everything. <laughs> the St. Jude Dream Home. So Ashley yes. sponsors uh, we sponsor the St. Jude Dream Home a- in Charlotte. You do. Uh, there's we have a $10,000 sponsorship. Woo. So we give away a $10,000 shopping spree yeah. when that drawing happens. I think that's October the 19th. It is. Okay. Thursday, October 19th. 19th. Okay. <laughs> so there's opportunity um you know, for folks to go and and view the home, we'll mm-hmm. be staging that. So yeah. our, we have a phenomenal team of memory makers, uh, led by Lynn Knowles and our merchandising yeah. department, and um, and our BI team and merchandising team. That we go in and we stage the home and make that beautiful for folks so to, to see. Warm and welcoming. And so when you walk in the home, you can feel like this could be my house, Andy. right? But it truly could be your furniture because of the sponsorship price that you all offer. Yeah, and it's great. And I and I do understand that this year it's a little extra special. It is. It's a little extra tell us tell us a little bit about that. Right. So our media partner for the St. Jude Dream Home of Charlotte uh, is WBTV. And last year our one of our anchors was Jason Myers, the meteorologist. And so what we all know now is that in November of last year, Jason lost his life in a tragic incident. Mm -hmm. Um, But Jason loves St. Jude. Gosh, he loves St. Jude. And a week before he passed, um, he actually sent an email to his children inviting them to join him in the St. Jude mission. And so they took it upon themselves to really embrace it. And Newton Custom Homes said, Count us in as well. And that's our builder for the St. Jude Dream Home. And so there are touches of Jason throughout the house wow. to give tribute to his heart and his legacy and honestly to pass the torch to the next supporter. And so two of his children, they joined St. Jude Leadership Society and continued on helping the kids of St. Jude and actually got to go to Memphis with their mom and their grandma. Um, but more so than that, they got to be there when the final ticket was sold for the St. Jude Dream Home and got to feel $3 million raised for the kids wow. of St. Jude. That's the largest ever. If largest I... ever. Okay. Largest in the country. Like, way wow. to set some records, Charlotte. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Charlotte, again, showing up. Yes, Charlotte always. shows up. Yes. Yeah. So uh, for listeners, that is 3027 Gray Pond Lane, yes. in Monroe. Uh, so again, that o- those open house dates will be released. You can uh, go to the website. I actually brought them. Oh, you have them? I did. Of I course. came prepared. You know, I, I, we had this conversation. You're my favorite Girl Scout. Thank you. you. Are always, you're always prepared. So share those Share yeah, those dates. So we are going to start open house on September 16th. Okay. And so open houses will be on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So on Saturdays, starting September 16th, you can visit from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sundays, from noon to 5. And so we're going to take that all the way through October 15th. So make sure you go out on one of those weekend dates. And when you enter, you'll have uh, enter 
enter the home, you'll have the opportunity to enter to win your incredible prize that yes. you all offer. And there's lots of other giveaways. There too. are a there's, ton of prizes. It's, it's, yes. a, it's a great night mm -hmm. uh, full of, uh, of winnings, but also ultimately full of giving to these families yes. and to St. Jude yes. and, it, and how special that is. And we're just so very mm -hmm. honored that you chose us to You to chose do us <laughs> and we're grateful. We the, are, it's a great partnership. When I think about Broad River Retail and what you all do, it's so much more than dollars raised, though those are tremendous and let's not yeah. minimize that. But it's the awareness piece yes. of letting the, the community know that you've joined us in this fight to end childhood cancer, but also that you're empowering them to, get, to join us as well. Yeah, the passion that our memory makers have for giving back and specifically for St. Jude, uh, it, it just continues to grow. Um, we have in our in our stores, we have cards for kids that yes. we started uh, for Valentine's Day. And that's where they make the cards and they, they're handwritten cards. They get their construction it's paper. So out sweet. And, they, <laughs> and, they, and they, they do, they just, they mail them to the kids. Yeah. And, and then it came Christmas. And we're like, we're going to do it for Christmas too. Yeah. We're like, let's go. So it is so intentional mm -hmm. and it really is from the heart. It's not because we have to, it's because, you know, this team of memory makers, they want to, they want, they to. want to make a difference for these families. So it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, so we're, let's talk about other ways that, that, you know, funds are raised and how we're going to start giving back too. is you and I just had a conversation last week and, you know, we've, largely it's been in the stores and our community has been able to take part in that and give to the families of St. Jude through their donations. But we're working on a program to get our inside our four walls, an opportunity for our people to give back as right. well. So let's talk about that. a little. Let's bit. talk about that. It's always so beautiful to see the different ways that partners show up for the kids at St. Jude. You have already engaged your customer base in so many ways through your memory makers, but have we asked your memory makers, would you like to join in? And so this will give them that opportunity through a payroll deduction. Yes. And when many people think about payroll giving, they think, oh, my gosh, that's so passive. I don't really think about it. But the impact is so incredible. And the fact that you don't think about it shows just how big of an impact you can have. Uh, so when we think about payroll giving, it honestly is a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars off of a paycheck mm -hmm. that happens before you get your paycheck so that that money goes to the kids of St. Jude right away. Um, and that every dollar matters. Every dollar adds up so quickly. And it's just an opportunity to give back in just another fashion. Yeah. You know, through the giving campaign, even a dollar a week. Yeah. I think about that. I'm I have a, a dollar of loose change that gets in there. Well, actually, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know we use much change anymore. It's always swapped in the oh card. But I do have a dollar bill or whatever. Uh, you know, those get lost in, in, yeah. the, in the sofa cushions, you mm -hmm. know. What can that dollar go to for these kids in St. Jude? So right. a dollar a week. What does that, that give them? That gives you about $52 a year, right? And so when you think about $52, I want you to think about two children on their very last day of chemotherapy. At St. Jude, we love to have fun, as we've said throughout this whole conversation. But something that you think wouldn't be fun is taking your last round of chemo. Right. That's a hard day. You're, in, you're taking in chemo. Your body's going through the thick of it. Um, but we throw what's called a Nomo Chemo Party. Love the Nomo Chemo. The chemo Nomo Chemo Party is so fun. So incredible um, to witness. Just imagine a child sitting in their hospital bed, taking that last round of chemo, surrounded by everyone that has been there with them throughout the journey. All of their loved ones, their doctors, their nurses, and they're going to sing this silly song and then toss confetti. And when they toss that confetti, it is a moment of you've got to this point. You are stronger than this. Keep going. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good for mm -hmm. them, but it also feels good for their families. And so there's cake and there's this sign that they all get to sign. And it's just a milestone that they get to celebrate. And so $52 is two children's no more chemo parties. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there every you, dollar every, makes a difference. Every dollar <laughs> does make a difference. Um, do you have a favorite story to share, whether it's um, a Nomo Chemo or is it a campus visit mm -hmm. or is it with uh, the donor and volunteers or Gosh. share something with us? 
So um, pre-COVID, we used to tour inside of the hospital. Now we're all over the campus because the campus is growing so much. We want you to see every corner of it. But pre-COVID, we would go inside of the patient care facility area and walk those halls and see those smiles and see those kids going to and from treatment. Well, one time I was touring a group of supporters around the hospital. We were in the area where there is a teen art gallery. So they're looking at all of the artwork from our teenage patients and how they depict cancer in their lives. Um, And we were stopping and we were talking and somebody looks down and there's a piece of confetti on the floor. And we were like, wow, it's a great day to be here. Because when you see confetti on the floor, even just one piece, you know that a child finish their chemo that day. You know what that means. You know that was a normal chemo party. Wow. And when I share this story with other colleagues and such, they tell me about times that children have run out of that medicine room screaming with joy, giving high fives and saying, it was my last day of chemo today because of you. And to have a child say thank you to you, it feels very weird because you're like, no, thank you. And it's just like this back and forth of gratitude Mm -hmm. because- we get to have them in our lives for so much more. Yeah. Um, and there is, there's no, no way to put that into words. Wow. Thanks That's for like sharing it. that. That is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Laura. That's, uh, if that doesn't get you <laughs> pumped up, man, I'm not really sure. You gotta, that, that, that pulls the heartstrings for love sure. The kids. You gotta love it. <laughs> so, um, so before we wrap up, yeah. let's, let's talk about quickly, um, the volunteer, how others, right. how our listeners uh, can volunteer. What are, what are ways that they can yeah. do that? So when we think about supporting St. Jude, of course, donations, it, it's at the forefront of conversation because families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food. We have to fund that in some mm-hmm. way. So donations is obviously top of mind. Mm-hmm. But volunteerism, ooh, that matters so much. Yeah. <laughs> so when we think about the Carolinas and we think about volunteerism, there is a website for that, of course. So every Everything lives within stjude.org. That is the okay. hub. stjude.org. You can Google it all right in there. Sure. I guess search it all in there. <laughs> sure. sure. But if you go to volunteers.stjude.org, you can search by zip code to see volunteer opportunities in your area. So if you're not going to give a donation or maybe it's not that time in your pay schedule to be giving a donation, that's totally okay. Your time is valuable. Your talents are valuable. So you can volunteer at one of our events. You can volunteer in our office. There are times and talents that we need to help make our mission thrive. Well, that's incredible. And also for companies, you know, that that want to get involved and you know, they can also contact you yes, through that please website. Reach out. Are please you reach kidding me? Reach <laughs> out. <laughs> reach out. And I'm I'm always listen, I'm such an advocate and there are so many people that work within Broad River that are advocates. So um lines of communication, let's keep them open. Let's yes. do it for the kids. Yes. So um Listen, Laura, your passion and your energy today is just so contagious. Thank and it you. is it is so um, great to sit here with you. But before we go, okay. <laughs> this is where the rapid fire this comes. This is the part I'm most nervous about. It's fine. <laughs> the rapid fire okay. questions. Okay, okay, are you ready? Yes. All right. So here we go. Um, so summertime, mm-hmm. you you love a little summertime. but Who doesn't? But your favorite time is fall, right? Yes. Okay, so let me just ask you the question. Do you want to sit by a pool? Do you want to sit by the ocean? Or would you rather go to the mountains, Laura? <gasps> Sign me up for the mountains okay. any day, kid. Okay, <laughs> so I, I think there might be, I did hear that you like the mountains particularly. You might be having a trip to the mountains pretty soon. I do. I heard you're getting married in the I mountains. I am. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting married. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. You. That's just in a few short weeks. Um, It's in October. Okay. The day before the giveaway. Okay. So, yeah, when you're winning your St. Jude Dream Home, oh. think of me yeah. because I'm a new wife. <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So as we go, we're, we're going to wrap up our summer series yeah. and we're going to think a little bit more about fall now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So fall, would you choose pumpkin spice or salted caramel? In a drink or in a candle? Wherever. <gasps> I mean, what is your choice? I mean, I mean, what is your... Okay, let's go with the drink. A drink? Yeah. I'm going to go salted caramel. Okay, I'm just going to tell... I, I have pumpkin spice in here today. You're ready. It's all, It came out on the shelves. Yes, already here Wait, in it's August. Already it's, here. It's, it's already here. It's already here. Okay. Um, so, watching football... Okay. 
or fall festivals. Oh, fall um, festivals. Oh, Without a doubt. Oh, gosh. You don't even have to finish your question. Oh, wow. Now, see, I love fall festivals, but it better not contradict the football schedule. I understand. I know. I understand. Yes. I went to an SEC school. I can appreciate okay. some football, but give go. me a festival. It's fun, right? So fun. fun. All right. So would you want to sit by a bonfire mm-hmm. or in front of the fireplace? Ooh, bonfire. Really? Yeah, I'm very outdoorsy. I love a good hike. I love the mountains. I love to be outside. So, yes, a bonfire. Okay. Mm-hmm. And on the bonfire, is it just the marshmallows or are you going for the s'mores? You got to go for the s'mores. Okay. Are you kidding? <laughs> How could you pass that up? I'm a dessert girl. Sign me up. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. And lastly, uh, for we're going to wrap your summer reading list or your summer movie list or your summer playlist. Which, what, do you do all three? Are you... I'm a big reader. Okay. Um, I actually, so every year set a reading goal and already hit mine for this year. Oh, for the year. (laughs) For the year. Kim, I need to to expand it. Um, But most recently, I read Wild Ride by Haley Arsenault. She is actually a St. Jude patient turned St. Jude physician's assistant turned astronaut for the kids of St. Jude. And she wrote a memoir. (laughs) Yes, about her time getting to go to space to celebrate St. Jude's mission and the donors. Oh so I thought it was going to be a heart-wrenching story, but I read it in one day because I was so into it. It's incredible. And it was so inspiring. I highly recommend. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hope that for the fall reading list, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna get those ready for us, right? I need to, I need to work on my list, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Laura, it's been such a pleasure sitting Thank here with you. you. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having for, me. Well, and for shining a light on St. Jude and and and. Uh, telling everyone the story of St. Jude. And and it's sometimes we just think about that in a little different way. So now, yeah, thanks for sharing the story. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week and remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.